The Raven, authored by Edgar Allan Poe, originally published in January 29th, 1845. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I, while I, pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, there came a tapping, as if so, as if some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I murmured, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. I die. Distinctively, I remembered it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghosts upon the floor. Eagerly, I wished on the morrow. Vainly, I had tired to borrow from the books so crease of sorrow. Sorrow for the loss of Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels have named Lenore, nameless here for evermore, and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that, too, still, breathing of my heart stood a repeating, "'Tis some visitor entering entrance at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor or entering entrance at my chamber door. "'Some lay visitor entering entrance at my chamber door. "'This is, this it is, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating there no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, f truly your forgiveness, I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came a-tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce... Well, sure, I heard you. I open the door wide. The uh, wide the door. I here, here. I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness, peering long, I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting dreams, and no mortal ever dared to dream before. But their silence was broken, and the darkness gave no token, and only were and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. Then I whispered and echoed, murmured back the word Lenore, merely this word and nothing more. Then into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon I heard again a tapping louder than ever before. Surely, I said, surely that is something at my win window lane lattice. Let me see then what threat, threat is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and the mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Opened, uh, opened here, I flung the shutters, when with many a flirt and flutter, then there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least opportance made he, and... Uh, not an instant stopped or stayed he, but with men of lord and or lady perched upon my chamber door, perched upon a bust of pillars just above my chamber door, preached and sat, and nothing more. 
Then this obedient this ebony bird began smiling, bulging my sad fancy into smiling, but the grave and stern decrom and the discontents it wrote. Oh, thy crest be shown and shaven, thou, I said, art thou no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore? Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Blutonian shore, quoth the raven. Eat my shorts. <laughs> Sorry, Simpsons reference. Won't happen again. Much I marveled thus ungrainfully foul to hear disclosure, and so plainfully, though the, its answer little meeting, little relevancy bore with we, for we cannot help our agreeing that sol sublunary being every yet was blessed with seeing the bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above the chamber door, with such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the palace bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour, nothing farther than he uttered, not the feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely mourned and muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as many hopes have flown before, quoth the raven, nevermore. Wonder, wondering at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtless, I said, what it utters, it is only stock and store caught from one happy, from some unhappy master whom unmercifully disaster flaw followed fast and followed faster. So when hope he would endure stern and return instead of a sweet hope he dared adjured that sad answer nevermore but but the raven still bulging all my sad soul into smiling star hair straighted i wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust and door then I velvet sinking, I betook myself to in to linking fancy in unto fancy, thinking what this uh, ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant the croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now bird into my blossom's core. This and more I sat divvying with my her with my head at ease, reclining on the cushions fair it lining that the lamp light goodling o'er but whose velvet violet lining with the lamp light goodly o'ring she passed the press ah nevermore then methought the air the air grew denser perfumed from an unseen censer swung by angels whose faint footfalls tinkled on the on the tuft floor wretched wretched i cried thy god hatched lent me hath let me lent thee thy god hath let thee by these angels he hath sent sent, sent thee respite respite and Nepieth from the memory from thy memories of Lenore, let me quaff this kind of Nepheon and forget this lost Lenore. <laughs> Quoth the Raven, nevermore. Dope.
Prophet, I said. Thing of e said I. Thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. Ra whether temper, tempt her scent, or whether temptest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted on this desert land, on this desert land, enhanced on this home by ah uh, by horror haunted. Tell me, I implore, is there, is there, is there balm in guild? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said, thing of evil, prophet still. If bird or devil, by heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within a distant Adian it still clasp and a stained maiden, whom the angel who's named Lenore crasp a crasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore Quo Quoth the Raven Nevermore Do oh, be that word our sign parting bird or fiend I shriek I shrieked abstained Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy far form from off my door, quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven never filting, sitting, still a sitting, still a sitting, on the pied bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, and his eyes all have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming, streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.